What's going on guys? So a couple of days ago I got a package from my buddy Michael Dinsmore over at Making Sense. Shout outs to Mike. I appreciate you sending this my way. He's got four new creations that I want to check out. I was trying to hold off as long as I could because my stepbrother Sam Broom has his own original fragrance now called Sweeping Up. Get it? Sam Broom Sweeping Up. Haha, <laughs> nice play on words. And uh, a few of these I've smelled through the atomizer. I haven't sprayed them because they're so strong you can smell them through the atomizer. But uh... I'm definitely very excited to talk to the talk to you guys about these. We're going to dive into them, see what's originals, what the note breakdowns are, what I get from them, and so on. So stay tuned. All right, so first and foremost, I want to start with the one that is so strong for the atomizer and it sparks a memory. It is called Grandma's Table. And Grandma's Table smells like potpourri. Yes dry dusty woody and potpourri straight up potpourri now the only thing i can complain about is he puts the shimmer in this a lot of shimmer so i'm not a fan of the shimmer that will stain clothes that's been my experience not a fan of the shimmer so be mindful of that definitely spray skin to where clothes aren't going to rub my advice of course I haven't sprayed it yet but i have smelled it through the atomizer and i get like this Strong apple, cinnamon, just all that. There it is. God, it smells like walking into Bath and Body Works almost. Or think fall season during Thanksgiving time, walking into one of those types of stores, almost like a certain section at Hobby Lobby, for example, for arts and crafts that have the fall theme stuff. A lot of cinnamon sticks going on here. There's a dense sweetness, but there's a lot of bright, dry spice to this one. Oh, this is so good, even on paper. This one is so good. This is the one that interested me the most, just from sniffing them through the atomizers. So this is why I started with Grandma's Table. This is fall holidays, Christmas holidays, and a bottle from Mike. Yes, Fallen Leaf is still the end-all, be-all for making sense. Don't get me wrong. That's still my number one recommendation from Mike. But, damn, this is good. Like I said, a lot of sweetness here. Almost like a vanilla and caramel type of combo. There's a strong gourmand aspect to this. Almost like a warm apple pie kind of thing going on. Some potpourri, like a lot of things you would find on Grandma's table. So let's do this. Where's my phone? I am going to pull up the Making Sense website. And obviously in the editing process, I'll put the notes on screen for you guys. So here we go. Grandma's Table, makingsense.bigcartel.com. So let's see. This fragrance brings you back to a time with loved ones. Sweet cinnamon, baked apples, all of that, yes. Pumpkin pie, bread right, of, right out of the oven, and joy, all in a single fragrance. It really is a joyous type of smell. That's, that's pretty accurate. Good job, Mike. This, to me, embodies the classic family celebration with loved ones around the holidays. This warm and welcoming fragrance is my way of saying... Come be merry and join my family at Grandma's Table. Main accords of tobacco, sweet, boozy, amber, and warm, spicy. So here's the note breakdown. This is my first time reading any of this, by the way. I like to go in as blind as I can. Top notes of pumpkin, lemon, coconut, red apple, and green apple. It's an interesting top. Mid notes of cassia root, mahogany wood, clove, brown sugar, and ginger. Base notes of maple sugar, cane sugar, toasted oak, Cinnamon, vanilla, bourbon, ambergris, and nutmeg. That's the main things I get from this is this, like, surprise there's no caramel here because it's got this thick, it's probably all this maple sugar and cane sugar mixing with the vanilla that's giving this caramel-like sweetness. It's a thick, caramelly, syrupy sweetness. A lot of spice, very warm and cozy. This stuff is great. God, this stuff is great. This is an immediate top five from the house. I don't know where in the top five. This one's worth checking out. These 17 mLs run you 20 bucks. So here's your variety in sizes all the way up to 100 mL. But the 17 mLs, which is what these are, sealed decants, are 20 bucks. And 17 mL goes a very long way with these guys because they're ridiculously powerful. They're extraits. I don't know the exact oil concentration but i'm confident it's above 30 because they leave a giant oil sheen on your hand but this one's phenomenal 
Oh, it's so addictive to keep going back to. But let's check out the one from my stepbrother, Sam Broom. So, here we go. It's called Sweeping Up. Like I said, play on words because his last name is Broom. And based on the barbershop poll, I'm guessing it's going to have some sort of barbershop vibe. So, we'll spray it first and we'll take a look at the notes after. Again, I haven't checked anything on any of these because, like I said, I like to go in blind as I can. Two good sprays. They're spraying right away, though. Creamy, powdery, sweet lemon. Almost like a sugared lemon. Definitely barbershop feel, but a little bit sweeter than your typical barbershop fragrance. Like I said, almost like a candy sweet lemon. Ooh, this is this is super nice. A little powdery. Aromatics. Got a clean soapy tone, but not a bomb of lavender. There's a nice underlying fresh spice and clean musk to this fragrance. Almost like a little bit of a leathery feel, too. This is everyday wear type of stuff. I just noticed there's a little bit of a shimmer in here. Well, it won't focus for some reason, but there's a gray shimmer. Not as bad as Grandma's Table. I mean, I haven't shaken it, shaken it in a while, and it's still got a bunch of shimmer going on. This is hyper-versatile. You guys have heard me use that term before. I think this is a great, great everyday scent. I think Sam when I smell this, too. Because I know Sam's taste. Sam and I share a lot of similar taste. Um... He likes the barbershop stuff. He likes the powdery stuff. He likes the mass appealing stuff. He likes a lot of 90s style fragrances, which I enjoy as well. And this kind of encapsulates a lot of that. This is 80s, 90s barbershop with a little bit more of a modern mass appeal to it for this powdery tone, this candied sweet lemon smell. This is really freaking nice. Let's check out the notes on this one. Let me go to the search real quick. So here we go. Sweeping up. Same offering, same pricing. So this one's been in the works for some time now. I've been looking to create an original barbershop fragrance to bring home to making sense. This fragrance finally came to be after some back and forth with a good friend of ours in the fragrance community. The name of this fragrance is a play on words with his name paying respect. We know this, we know this man of a friend to many, including our making sense family. Sweeping up brings some shine to my friend Broom. Broom. Sam Broom. Interesting that he said that. As soon as I confirmed that Sam was a big fan of barbershop fragrances, which he is, this was a no-brainer, and the name and concept came to life. Broom, broom equals sweeping up at the barbershop at the end of the day. Nice play on words. Sam is a great part of this community who has always shows love to Fougere and barbershop-style fragrances while being friends with just about everyone. Show me the lie. This is all very accurate stuff. Sam, thank you for your contribution to this amazing community, and I'm so happy this product plant, this fragrance paying homage to you, my friend. Main Accord, citrus, yes. Sweet, yes. Woody, fresh, spicy, and powdery, yes. Aromatic, yes. Fresh, yes. I get all of that. Top notes, lemon, clear as day. Juniper berries, bergamot, and patchouli. Mid notes of jasmine, orange flower, vanilla, and geranium. Base notes of tonka bean, ambergris, tobacco, woodsy notes, warm spice and white musk there's a little bit of an like a leathery type of feel to this one too could just be the way it's coming across on the paper very aromatic it's interesting to see that the aromatics in here is juniper berries and geranium um, and there's no lavender that explains why it's just a little soapy and not extremely soapy because if there was a lot of lavender in here it would have more of a soapy appeal more than likely candy sweet lemon it is getting a little bit spicier but a lot of this clean musk, I'm not surprised to see white musk in here. I am surprised to see warm spice as an accord in the base. Or a collection of notes. It is warming up a little bit, but I wouldn't call this a very warm fragrance. This is much more fresh than it is warm. Yeah, this is on the more unique side of Barbershop. Um, I am, because of the way the lemon comes across... It does give me a little bit of a vibe of like a moustache 1949 Eau de Toilette from Rochas. Doesn't smell exactly like that, but it's 
it's got that candied lemon in the top. This is definitely a lot stronger and more complex of a fragrance, but that's the type of candied lemon, for those of you that have smelled it, that this kind of reminds me of with the lemon specifically. Not the overall presentation and scent profile, but definitely that lemon. It's another really good one. This one's probably going to have to go in the rotation this week. This is right, right up my avenue, my cup of tea as well. Because it's not cold enough yet for Grandma's Table. I will be wearing that probably in December. But sweeping up, another hit. Next, let's check out Tobacco. Just plain and simple. Tobacco. Okay. Tobacco it is. So I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to take a risk and assume that there's tobacco in this fragrance. <laughs> no shit, right? Ooh, very sweet and moist tobacco. Very, very sweet. Has like a rum booziness to it as well, but it's very sweet. This one does not have any of the shimmer. Very moist tobacco, humidor type of smell, but much more sweet, like having a, a nice sweet cocktail while smoking the cigar. This is definitely moist and sweet. There is some spice in the background, but it's not, I wouldn't call this a very spicy tobacco fragrance. Maybe as it dries, it'll get more spicy. But um, at the same time, this is on a test strip. This is, this is very thick. Even on the paper, this is a very dense and thick tobacco. This is good. Tobacco lovers will like this one. I'm still waiting to come across a fragrance from Mike that I can crap all over. I've yet to find one, and I've got like 20 of them now. It reminds me of the genre, but not a specific fragrance. I feel like this is kind of like Fallen Leaf, where it's a combination of maybe some of his favorite tobacco scents, because Mike likes to do that, because Fallen Leaf is a combination of some of his favorite fall time fragrances. It's a mixture of of the highlights of five different fragrances, where I bet this is the highlights of a few different tobacco scents. We're gonna get into the story here in a minute. I'm, I'm pretty confident, I could be wrong. Uh, it's an assumption, but I have a feeling that's what this is. Because this one gives me the whole pure Havan type of smell going on, as well as like some one million Privé, without as heavy of a cinnamon. I've got a few things going on. Let's pull it up, I'm very curious. Here we go. Tobacco. Tobacco. This sweet yet true to its name tobacco fragrance is every tobacco fragrance lover's dream. Our goal when creating this fragrance was to make a sweet tobacco fragrance with boozy undertones. That's pretty straightforward in the scent, too. That will really win favor with tobacco fans. This is a warm and inviting tobacco that at first sniff brings the memory of a freshly opened bag of tobacco. To me, it reminds me of a family member walking by after smoking his pipe on the porch. Such a great fragrance for all you tobacco fans out there. Main of cords, main of cords of tobacco, sweet, boozy, amber, warm, spicy. Pretty accurate here. Top notes of bergamot, butter. That's why it's so thick, creamy, and thick and creamy. And coconut. Mid notes of patchouli, spice accords, bourbon, and cane sugar. That explains all the sweetness and the booziness. Base notes of tobacco, vanilla, caramel, musk, soft amber, and ambergris. There is more spice creeping in. And there's a touch of an earthy tone, but I, I wouldn't call this an earthy fragrance. If I was ranking the chords, it would be at the very bottom. It's there, but it's faint. Maybe on skin, it's a little bit more earthy. Very sweet. Very sweet and thick aroma. The butter doesn't surprise me. I mean, it doesn't smell like butter, but... That's definitely a note that'll provide a thickness to a scent profile. Really give it a lot of body. This is definitely that. Having a lot of body is a good way to describe this fragrance. Is it the best tobacco fragrance I've ever smelled? No. Is it a tobacco fragrance that'll probably be a hit for most people? Yes, that I do think it is. I do like the first two better than this, but this is still a really good fragrance. Um... This is super blind by safe if you're into tobacco. Like I said, it doesn't remind me of one specific tobacco fragrance. It reminds me of the genre as a whole. Sweet, boozy, moist, dark and earthy, a little spicy. 
kind of like the, an all-star of accords for a good tobacco fragrance for the cold. Pretty good. It's pretty good. We'll rate them at the end, but tobacco, it's pretty good. Last but not least, we have Alpha. No clue what it is. Love that there's a lion's head on there. Definitely dig that about it. So no clue what this one's going to smell like. I couldn't smell this one through the atomizer either. At least I don't remember smelling it through the atomizer, but let's check it out. This is different. This has an animalic tone to it. It's musky. It's fresh. It's aromatic. But it's not dirty. It's a little green. I'm getting like some fresh green tones here. There's something animalic about this, but there's something very fresh at the same time. I wonder if there's cypress in here, because that would make sense based on what I'm smelling. This fresh, almost minty-like green feel. Very aromatic, because cypress has an aromatic appeal to the scent. A little bit of citrus, but not overwhelming. This one smells like it might have some lemon in it as well. It's not blowing me away, but it is nice. It's making me want to deep dive more. It's interesting. That's a good thing. It's very interesting. It doesn't remind me of anything as far as other scents I've smelled. Let's see what's going on with this one. I'm very curious. I was not anticipating that to smell this way. I was thinking more mass appealing when I looked at the label and the name. And I'm not saying it's challenging. It's just not standard mass appealing type of stuff. Love that orange lion head. That's, look how vibrant that is. It's cool looking. Okay. Our interpretation of Chanel the Lion. So this is a clone. I haven't smelled the original. That makes sense on why I've never smelled it before. I've never smelled the original. Accords of amber, woody, musky, powdery, citrus, patchouli, vanilla, balsamic, yes. Warm, spicy. Top notes of bergamot and lemon. There you go. Mid notes of labdanum and amber. Base notes of patchouli, Madagascar, vanilla, sandalwood, musk, and ambergris. I wonder why it's got this animalic musky tone to it. It's a little leathery. That could be what it is. Probably this labdanum. Labdanum, labdanum. Depends on tomato, tomato. I always say labdanum. It's warming up pretty quickly with some sweetness. A warm sweetness. Again, not blowing me away. But it's really nice. It's a nice smell. Like I said, I've never smelled the original. The main selling point for me is this, this label. That's a cool ass label. If it would focus, that would just be fantastic. There we go. That's one cool label right there. It's getting a little bit more on the musky side. Like I said, it's got this leathery feel and a warm sweetness. It's not warm and spicy, but it's warm and sweet. Is there even any spice? It says warm spices in a cord. I don't really find it to be that spicy. There's definitely musk and ambergris, so that's that muskiness I keep getting. It's nice. Let's give these a rating. So now that it's had time to dry, Grandma's Table. We're going to smell this one again. This is the one. This is the one. Nothing else in this video is going to top the rating for this one. I'm sorry. This is the winner of the video. <laughs> the first fragrance is the best fragrance. Honestly, I think they're actually ranked in order. Just kind of worked out that way according to how I like them. But this... For all the accords that are familiar and the scent memory that it will create for you, for a lot of people anyways, it's actually quite original. Which makes it that much more remarkable. I think the idea behind this fragrance... The way the scent profile comes out, I'm not even going to knock it for the shimmer because I hate the shimmer. I don't, it looks cool. Pain in the ass on clothes, telling you. I'm not even going to deduct points for the shimmer because, you know, not everybody has, that's a, that's a preference thing. But the scent, the way it's composed, obviously performance is outrageous. It's a 9 out of 10. Not too often I do 9 out of 10. 
and this is just on paper, in the first impressions. This is outstanding. Bravo, Mike. Bravo. Grandma's table is outstanding. I think this is the best newer release from Making Sense this year. My thoughts, my opinions. This is one that's worth having the experience, at least getting a sample, something. Yeah, it's outstanding. Next, we have Sweeping Up, my man Sam Broom. Yeah, this is Mass Appealing Everyday Barbershop. I'm digging this. This is my kind of stuff. This is one of those scent profiles that I can keep going back to because eight out of every ten wares is something on the more mass appealing side for me, the everyday type of wear. Still getting that candied lemon with the aromatics. It's very clean and musky, but there's a beautiful fresh spicy accord here. This one's very good. This one is a 7.5 out of 10. This is some good stuff. I'm probably going to wear this one over the next few days. I got, I got my lineup ready for the rest of the week. I got to figure out what I'm going to bump out of the rotation so I can wear this one. I, this is... This is my kind of jam right here. Sam and I have similar tastes, so I'm, I'm not surprised that I like the fragrance for Sam. Sweeping up to 7.5 out of 10. Now, tobacco. Kind of like the all-star hybrid of the tobacco lover's world, I guess you could say. It's gotten much more boozy and ambery. The spice kind of toned down. It was getting a little spicy for a minute, but... I don't get a lot of that. A lot of, like, it's almost like a creamy, rich tobacco smell at this point. This is another one that's very good. It's a 7 out of 10. This is one you can just keep sniffing and sniffing and sniffing and just wear your nose out because you can't stop sniffing it. So it's very good. Again, like I said, not the greatest tobacco fragrance I've ever smelled. Like, there's two that I put pretty high up on a pedestal. It'd be hard to knock them down, but this is definitely one of the better ones out there, for sure. And worth an experience, if you're into tobacco, you should definitely try this. Might be the one for you. Yeah, 7 out of 10. Then finally, Alpha. A clone of Chanel Le Lion. Which, again, I've never smelled the original. So this is a new experience for me. It is getting better as it dries. The opening was nice. It was very interesting. Um, a lot of lemon at the top. A little animalic and leathery. Very musky. A lot of that's still going on here. I'm getting more of that ambergris, musky type of feel. Almost a little earthy type of musky tone, but still clean. It doesn't come across as dirty. Not my favorite in the video, definitely my least favorite. Like I said, they just happen to work out that way to where they're ranked in order. It just worked out that way. I still think it's better than good, though. It's solid. Doesn't blow me away. I don't know if it's something I'll reach for over and over. Yet to be determined. This is first impressions on the test trip. But I think Alpha is a 6.5 out of 10. Not a bad rating at all. Like I said, in my rating system, a 6.5 is better than good. So it's not an average and basic scent profile to me. It is better than good. It's better than most, is what that means. It's in a, the upper level of percentage of a good fragrance. It's just not quite a great fragrance, you know? But it's nice. Mm. Well, that is my first impressions and thoughts and feelings on four of the newest scents from Making Sense. And I gotta tell you guys, Grandma's Table and Sweeping Up, that's the ones. That is the ones. A 9 out of 10, which is rare for me. And a 7.5 out of 10 for Sweeping Up. I think these are the two to try in the video for sure. Obviously, if you're into tobacco, you can't go wrong here. But my two recommendations for sure is Grandma's Table and Sweeping Up. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. Have any of you tried this already? I know I'm not first to the game. I was uh, told to kind of hold off a few days because Sam had not had an opportunity to do a video on Sweeping Up himself. And then I saw a few others. Already did some live streams feature them, so I said, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and smell them and do my video. I was excited to smell these fragrances, especially Grandma's Table, because I could smell it through the atomizer. Just, for me, mind-blowingly good. Not everybody may feel that way. It may be a 6 or a 7 to some, but I think it's a 9. I think it's just great. 
my recommendation. If you're only gonna try one, try grandma's table. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the four and you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later because they're all at least better than good. Have a good one, guys. Mm -hmm.